All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'll start shortly, so please take a seat. Order your drinks. We'll start in a couple minutes. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondent Club of Thailand. My name is Panu Wong Chiu-um. I'm the senior correspondent for Reuters and the vice president of the FCCT. Welcome to a very special evening uh, today where we are going to be meeting with um, two key figures in the new People's Party, the opposition People's Party. Of course, you know, Thailand has disbanded the Move Forward Party last month and they regrouped into this new political vehicle, the People's Party, uh, after it was dissolved by the Constitutional Court. Under this new leadership, Kunatapong Heng Rung Panyawut, who's only 37, one of the youngest political leader in the country, the party has vowed to carry on its mission in parliament to push for major reforms in Thai politics. This includes amending military drafted constitution and push, push forward many liberal agendas uh, that Move Forward has previously proposed, winning them the most parliamentary seat in the last general election. Since the dissolution, Thailand has also seen the dismissal of former Premier Seta Tuisin by the same court for ethics violation. A parliamentary vote has elected an Patong Tan Shinawat as the country's youngest prime minister. And of course, the rest is history. We know now where we are today. So we want to really hear from the People's Party about um, their agenda, their work, and you know, how they see the current Thai political landscape. So without further ado, I want to invite Kun Natapong or Kun Teng to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Kun Panu. Thank you, Kun Panu. Thank you, everyone. That all gathered to be here tonight, and thank to FCCT to uh, invite me and Kun Silikanya to this forum. Um, despite many people say to me now today that congrats to me as a party leader, but uh, I still disappoint to the Constitutional Court verdict that uh, regarding the dissolution of Move Forward Party. If you can recall, on the 6th March, in 2020, Mr. Tanaton and Mr. Pita were here after the dissolution of the Future Forward Party. And on that day, Mr. Tanaton told us that the dissolution of the Future Forward Party was not an end. It was just the beginning of this chapter two. But for me, I don't want uh, the next chapter to be happening. <laughs> I just want this is the chapter in of the junta or the coup d'etat in Thailand. Mr. Tanaton told us that no one can stop the win of change, the progressive movement of the people that we started five years ago. And the last year election result shows that his statement is still true. Our challenges in the next three years is regarding how we can win the majority seats in the parliament. I have to accept that this is not an easy task to do, but I believe, truly believe, it is possible to achieve. By doing that, we plan to expand our party membership in all areas across the country. Within this year, we will organize the open house event in our province uh, in Thailand. We plan to revise 
our all 300 policies uh, that Kun Silikanya may share to you that how we can improve our policy to be suitable uh, the people needs in the next election. Furthermore, we are going to send the candidates in the local election, especially in the provincial level, that we have a good chance to win. Uh, that we think that it is a good opportunity for us to deliver the policies to the people and to bring it into reality. It is like the strategic uh, movement for us uh, to gain more people's confidence that we can run the country in the future. Lastly, I will use uh, the short time for introduction and let you like the Q&A session. Uh, I am, uh, for personally talk, I have to accept that I think I'm not, despite I'm not uh, uh, deserved for Thai people as a prime minister, I believe in myself right now, but I truly believe that I can improve myself in the next three years. So we plan that I have to travel across the country within a year uh, for 77 provinces. So you can, if you can calculate that, meaning that in five days, in each, every five days, I have to go in one province to travel across the country within a year. This occasion will make me, will make me ready to be the next prime minister make me understand the people needs in local areas and help us to develop the policies that suit the people needs in, uh, in, the, uh, in the rural areas. So that is uh, our current plan and what is our movement. I can tell you that our main priorities, our main policies will be, sti will be steam, uh, still the same. To protect the human rights, to bring the full democracy to Thailand, that will be and must be the same. We you keep continue on that. So uh, it is my sh very short introduction, <laughs> and we'll give back to you for the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Kap. Before we go to Q&A, I'm going to ask both of you, of course, Kunapong uh, is joined by Kun Sri Kanya, who currently been elected deputy leader as well of the party, Excited. right? So before, before we go to q and I'm just going to ask a couple of questions, and then you guys can have the microphone. So I think one of the key questions is, you know, you, you mentioned the constitutional court um, decision, but both of you and 44 others, current and former members of your movement, is facing this, this, this ethics probe uh, by the NA, uh, National Anti-Corruption Commission. Um, do you have any comment on this ongoing threat that maybe 44 of you, including both of you, I think, could be banned for life, right? You, 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 either of you share to, to comment on that? Sure. Uh, for the current situation about the 44 MP cases, uh, the NACC might uh, send the case to the su Supreme Court uh, in January, and we all will prepare for the cases. Um, not only that, uh, uh, for the internal uh, of our party, we prepare like uh, uh, the colleagues and our team to uh, continue our work uh, in all scenarios. What will happen to the 44 MPs, I truly believe that we can continue the movement of our party. Very well. Uh, you want to say something? Yes, of course. Um, for me, I'm, of course, one of the victims. And um, you, you see how ridiculous this case is. We are the member of the House of Representatives, so our duty is to pass the law. So um, as we endorse the, the law to amendment the Article 112 of the, um, criminal, code. the criminal Court, I don't think that it's um, considered a violation of ethics at all. But um, you know, in this country, anything is possible and <laughs> it's totally unpredictable because they don't think in um, 
rational, logical sense. So um, we hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. We have our team, our, our legal team, uh, setting up uh, in order to um, fight for us against this case as all might. And um, of course, we might have faced um, a temporary, um, um, temporary um, ban from the mm. from the, the parliament, but we don't think that uh, could, uh, you know, can stop us or uh, disrupt our work or our movement at all because, you know, we can still work outside of the parliament as well, and uh, we have our our duty to. Um, grooming our new, the rest of the MPs who, you know, totally new, uh, have um, around one year of experience in the parliament, to to become um, even ready when uh, when the worst scenarios has come. Second question for me is, of course, we've been closely watching the by-election in Pitsunulog. I think uh, Kun Teng just mentioned that your your mission sort of is to contest in all the local elections. Now we saw the result there went against expectation because you, you guys won in the general election, uh, but this time around uh, sort of, you know, um, I guess uh, the, the other candidates uh, won the day. Do you have any comment on, on that particular uh, campaign? I mean, what did you notice? Why was the result came out that way? You know, if you mm. see in the election result, uh, the percentage uh, who votes for the People's Party to the uh, to, to the turnout, it is uh, 45 percent, mm. which is higher than Kun Patipat uh, in the last uh, the his last election. Yeah. The, the former district MP who uh, removed from his position because of the dissolution of the Move Forward Party. So it means in that uh, the density of the, word, the of the votes, we, we we have more density on the votes. But uh, there are many factors that may make me lose. I, I have to, I think I have to accept that uh, the, the people voice. So it, it is not like the, the, uh, the, the, the thing that we look into each factor and to, to claim that why we lose for each reason. I think it is, uh, we, we have to accept the people voice and have to like, to learn how we can improve uh, that uh, our next election in the future. Okay, and um, a couple more questions before we go to the floor is um, in terms of policy priority. Now we look at, at policy and what's going on in Parliament. Many, um, you know, foreign media sometimes follow closely, sometimes not. Can you maybe outline some of these uh, policies that you guys are working on? Maybe some of the things that are, that are your priorities. Of course. Um, I think it's, uh, it's uh, my turn because I'm the deputy leader uh, responsible for the policy platform of the party. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, I'm here to confirm that uh, all of the policy platforms that we pledged uh, during the last election, the last generation, uh, still um, going on, still continue. And uh, our pi priority right now is um, try to perfect those policies just uh, to be ready for implementation in the, um, in the next, uh, actually, in the next uh, three years. So it's in 2027. So um, of course, there are some, uh, there are some policies that we have to um, continue to, to drive. Uh, even though we we are in the opposition, so we have all the laws that we um, trying to to push um, uh, to pass the parliament. Uh, for example, the next um, next week, I think our um, competition law amendment will enter uh, into the first reading of the parliament. That's um, guarantee our uh, principle that um, the monopolization in the country, the uh, economic concentration uh, should be um, handled within the, um, uh, within the, the, the legal framework. That, so we have to have the better set of um, competition law, for example. The liquor liberation policy that mm. we have um, campaigned for so long, like six years, yes. uh, have just been um, um, delayed uh, of the vote for the first reading, for example, but um, 
uh, we still have high hope for that, that uh, when it comes back, uh, we're going to get it passed right again. And, um, and right now, we think we have uh, made it uh, into the mainstream. Uh, every single party has um, proposed this um, quite kind of alike law trying to liberalize uh, liquor industry in Thailand for the sake of the, uh, the retailers, the small entrepreneurs. So um, that's um, how we're going to continue our, our, uh, the whole policy and perfect it to, to, to make sure that it's ready for implementation in the next three years as we become the government. The last question for me before we go to the floor is something that I mentioned to both of you earlier. It's something that uh, some of the foreign media has been following, so I got um, requests uh, about this. this, this uh, there's an undercurrent through the, I guess, beyond the Piss in the Law campaign, but there's a current, un you know, undercurrent about anti-Myanmar migrants, uh, especially online, uh, many raised by opponents of your party, let's just say, and sometimes zero in on some of your MPs. Do um, you have any comment on, on why this is happening? Why suddenly the, the Myanmar migrant, you know, they've been in Thailand for such a long, such a, you know, an old issue. Why is it suddenly becoming a new thing? In a, I mean, do you or your party has any kind of thoughts on the, the issue? Thank you. May I? Because I'm, um, I'm kind of responsible for, for the debate that, that, that it happened. Uh, that one of our MP has speaking of this issue, particular issues um, uh, in the in the agenda that uh, of the policy statement that uh, the, the, the for, of the new government, and um, it surprised us too because it's not our first time uh, talk, uh, talking about Myanmar issues, and exactly the same uh, statement that we have in the parliament about uh, how we have to provide all the humanitarian aids for the refugees, um, especially for the public health, that um, at the end, if we, if we wouldn't uh, um, take care of, it's going to affect our own citizens, for example. Or the education issue, uh, it's very, um, it's a very surprise that the, the government has just accept um, um, the, to ratify the um, Article 22 of the um, the the, the uh, what's called the tr the rights of the child oh, um, yeah. treaty, right? And then we have the news. We heard the news that uh, they closed down the learning center in uh, Suratani for the uh, displaced Myanmar people. So we have um, to to talk about this in the parliament that uh, we didn't ask for um, uh, for something really huge. We asked for something very basic and very, um, um, at the least of the, you know, basic human rights, but um, still uh, they have, um, you know, have this is gone to become like, uh, like a spare back to us and, um, but, um, I have to make sure that uh, we will stand standing at the same um, stance and uh, we wouldn't change anything, even though we have to try to explain to lots of people, to our own supporters who don't agree with this, but we will try to make them to understand more about the issues, but not uh, going back or stepping back on this stance. Okay, I think I've asked enough questions. I would like to open the floor to uh, our members and so on. Please, there's a microphone uh, at the back there. Identify yourself, uh, direct your question to one or both of them, and also please limit the statement. More question. Thank you. Please. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Hi, thank you. This is uh, Sweely Wee from the New York Times. Um, thank you very much for this. I wanted to ask about uh, the amendment of Article 112. Uh, Kun Natapong, you said it was, um, it's still on the, very much on the agenda, but the party would not be callous. Um, 
was wondering whether you could expand on that. I mean, the Constitutional Court has clearly made it a red line, so how are you going to go forward with it? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I believe that uh, we have to accept that the Article 112 is still have the serious problems in Thailand with uh, which uh, against like the civil rights in uh, in the country, but uh, it is uh, our priority to discuss inside the party that how we are going to uh, to to do that. Uh, according to the constitutional court verdict, I think, um, for example, we 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 may not uh, propose them like in the campaign policy, but we just we we still do have uh, the rights to do in the parliament. According to the court verdict, uh, they said that. It is if it is the uh, right. the normal legislative process or niti banyak doi shop in in Thai, <laughs> we can we, we still can do that. Mm -hmm. So I can guarantee you that if we accept that it is a problem, that we have going to fix it, it in 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 what ways that we can do. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, uh, name G in Hollingworth. I'm the secretary of the uh, International Labour Network. Um, I want to go back to the uh, Pitts and Rook by-election that was mentioned previously. Now, on the one hand, you can quite legitimately claim, perhaps, that you are a new party. You haven't had time to bed in and uh, actually create your local links that are necessary to get you elected. On the other hand, uh, th there is a, a feeling in some quarters that you. Your party is little more than a Bangkok-based metropolitan elite. How would you respond to that charge? What do you think? Uh, Bangkok-based metropolitan elite. Well, for, for this case, I, I don't think uh, it's just um, um, one um, by election that we lost is gonna um, have, um, you know, uh, dictate us that, that we are just, uh, of, uh, of course, our stronghold is in the urban area, but uh, we still can get uh, more and more of the uh, district MPs, especially in the um, uh, district one, which is uh, the most urban area in each provinces, and uh, we know we have to do more to to win uh, the the peoples in the rural areas' heart. And uh, but uh, of course we are not just uh, Bangkok based anymore. We have um, almost um, ten MPs from the north, and um, three MP uh, no six MPs from the northeastern. And uh, we have all, um, I'm on almost all of the MPs uh, from the eastern part. So uh, the fact that we won um, 32 seats out of 33 of the MPs in the Bangkok area, it doesn't mean that we are only the Bangkok based. One of the key um, issues that we really, you know, focused on is that we, ha we try to expand our um, network of supporters in every provinces. Is this thing that we have done for, you know, since Future Forward, and it's, uh, you know, growing and growing. And uh, if you see at the, the membership uh, of, of the party, of course, the majority is from Bangkok, but we see um, the proportion of people from the, the up countries more and more every day, especially uh, with our uh, People's Party member. It's, you know, it's uh, totally distinct from those from the Move Forward Party. We can draw uh, a lot of more, you know, brand new members who never been um, any members of any political parties before. So it, it, it accounts um, around 20% of our uh, all membership. So it means that we are expanding. We know our um, short for that we are not working um, 
as as um, you know as much to bins uh, in the rural area. It's what we we trying to achieve. We and that's all in our plans in the next three years as well. So uh, make to make sure that we are the party of uh, the people of Thailand, not just Bangkok. Thank you. Well, guys, the mic is there. If people are still working out their question, um, I might go one <laughs> more for me. Um, constitution amendment, right? So this is a big issue, uh. changing the game. I mean, it looks like there's a lot of roadblocks along the way. There's been a lot of delays. What's your, what's your view on this process? I know that the party always <laughs> talks about this issue, but what is, is it achievable? Are we going to have referendum soon? You know, can you tell us a little bit about this? Thank you. Oh. Uh, you know, for the constitution amendment, the, there are two main tracks to do that. The first one is to uh, amend the whole constitution. But if you look into the process uh, right now, uh, I believe that the government has delayed the process uh, many times. And there is a very left little chance to do the whole uh, amendment before the next general election. By uh, it, it means that uh, if we cannot uh, do that in this tract. The next government will be under the current constitution, current, current distorted system. So we believe that the second tracks, the second option that we can do is it, just uh, amend article by article. That we already propose many, many of the drafts to the parliament right now to fix many, many things uh, in the current constitution. For example, to limit the power of the independent bodies or the constitutional court uh, to meet the international standards. Uh, and many things that we're going to uh, amend also is to protect the civil rights and to build the mechanism to prevent the next coup d'etat to be happening again. And also to uh, like to remove the 20 year strategic plan th that is uh, stated, stated in the constitution. So these are the example that we are going to amend the constitution uh, using the, 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 the second tracks to do that. Thank you, Goya. Hello everyone, I'm Goya, a former economic journalist from Thailand. So, but now I still jobless because just coming back from the UK. By the way, I would like to ask Kun Sri Ganya about the monetary, monetary policy, especially the digital wallet that the government already gave the money to the people. Uh, so as we know that uh, this policy, some may think that is like a populist policy or something like that. Uh, what do you think about this policy and what do you think like the international media should know about policy? Or do you have any suggestion more about this policy? Thank you. For Thai media, they know that I'm a big fan of digital wallet, and, <laughs> and I uh, follow this very closely. And um, of course, they just um, um, uh, launched the new um, campaign about giving a cash handout for 10,000 10, baht each for uh, f those vulnerable groups who have very um, um, very uh, small uh, uh, have. Uh, uh, very poor and uh, who own the um, the rights to to the you know the welfare the welfare card and those who are disabled and um, so that's not the digital wallets that has been pledged during the election campaign because this there's nothing about the digital they just give uh, giving away the cash handout for about 14.5 million people. So if this is the stimulus package, I don't think it's, um, it's effective because um, um, if you see the result that they will stimulate the, 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 the economy, it will give only 0.35% of the GDP boost. So we, you know, we put a lot of money and uh, we gain very, very few. So it's not uh, quite a very effective way to stimulate the economy in the first place. But we can see this as um, 
the cost of living uh, alleviation measures as well because we suffering from the cost of living um, for some time but, uh, but the government has ran out of the options for the people. Uh, but if you look at uh, the amount of money that the, the giveaway is 10,000 baht, which is like um, uh, we can say that like it's tripled at the time, uh, triple of the, the poverty lines of, the peop of those people who, 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 who get, uh, who get the, the money. So it's a little bit too much to be, <laughs> to be the cost of living alleviation plan. So this one is just, um, it's just that they cannot uh, implement uh, the digital wallet scheme that they have pledged because the legal issues, they cannot have the enough, enough of money that they, they want to, to pay out uh, because it's gonna you know, stack up to um, 500 billion baht, which is 16% you know, uh, uh, of the total budget, for example. So um, this is um, kind of a big deal that um, uh, if we continue to do this, uh, it will give a lot of fiscal burden to, to the country, to the economy. Um, the, the debt to GDP ratio will shoot up um, to 70% of the GDP that is the ceiling that we have right now for the fiscal discipline law. And uh, the interest burden will shoot up uh, more than 10% of the government revenue that is, you know, uh, that easily can see as um, the sign of downgrading of the credit rating agencies that they, they had abused for the investment grade um, sovereignty uh, credit ratings, for example. So this is, you know, it reflects that uh, when the government has become very short missed, they just want to um, stimulate the economy in a sh very short run. And it turns out that uh, it doesn't really uh, turns out well, and they have to, um, you know, po postpone and delay uh, the program, the, uh, this scheme for you know more than a year now, and it, it doesn't. Um, so it doesn't seem to be the short term, <laughs> uh, you know, the the very emergency, the urgent uh, issues anymore about the stimul uh, stimulating the economy. Turns out that uh, just try to save their face, that uh, they have to commit to the policy they pledge, they have to do anything just to, to find um, the way to, to, give it, to give away this, this money. And even though it could hurt a lot to the economy and have um, very um, bad consequences afterwards. So, this is, I think, it's a very, you know, summary of <laughs> what's going on with this digital wallet. Francesca. Hi, good evening. Uh, Francesca Rigolato with Nikkei Asia. I'm um, just picking up on uh, the topic of the economy. Um, can you explain what's in the competition bill and why it's going to be the first economy-related priority for People's Party? Um, and second, uh, I know you said that the focus is going to be on preparing the policies for the next three years, um, but the economy is in quite a bad situation at this moment. Um, so aside from the competition bill, what are you planning to do to make sure that your um, economic priorities are heard and given a fair hearing in the next three years? Of course. Um, uh, the, the competition law that we have, uh, have seen that is uh, there are some loopholes um, that uh, it's, you know, even though we have this competition law implemented effective for, um, I mean, six years already, five, seven years, but um, still, um, you know, and, and we believe at first that this one is, you know, way better than the, the last one that we have 20 years ago, that uh, we cannot, uh, yeah, you cannot, uh, you know, find someone to be guilty of anything for 20 years. So once we have this new competition law, we, we have high hope for it, for it that uh, we will solve our, um, you know, lack of competition problem in the country. But after, you know, four, five, six years of implementing uh, this law, we saw a big merging um, deal that has passed, uh, you know, the, the competition authority very easily 
And um, one is in the case of the retail um, um, retail market that uh, the merging of the um, uh, CP and uh, Tesco, and uh, that's uh, you know that 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 was allowed by the competition authority. And the other one is the merging deal of True and DTAC, which is the the second and the third largest operator um, mobile operator in Thailand. And it's also it passed easily that they don't um, the law even allow them to merge without asking for permission from the 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 authority. So this is the loopholes because um, for the retail um, uh, retail market uh, merging, uh, they they subject to the competition law, but still it's still um, still have the loophole that they allowed. The other, the True and DTAC uh, mobile operator merging deal, it's subject to another law by the um, NBTC, the National Broadcasting Television Commission. So um, what we try to do is to fix the competition law to become like the, um, the master of the, of the other laws that uh, regulating, uh, the, that the market regulates other, other sectors in the, in the country. So we, you know, try to avoid that uh, we have, you know, um, different laws and different practices about the competition, for example. We also um, try to fix the competition law to allow the, um, um, what's called, uh, leniency program, for example, that uh, is not allowed before. That uh, if, uh, if you have the cartel. And one of the one of the member of the cartels has you know tell on each uh, the others, so they have to uh, to have uh, to get some way from the penalty, for example. So we try to to, to fix the competition law to make sure that the, our legal framework it's guarantee the level playing field uh, for the for the economy for the um, for the. Um, for the newcomer to have the level playing field competition with the with the incumbents, for example, as we can see that the, our economy is very concentrated. So um, this one is, you know, uh, just very close to, to to my heart. So I mentioned this first, and the second one is um, the economic priority. So it's the same thing. Uh, I mean. In our policy that we placed during the election, the last election, we mentioned about to find a new new um, engine of growth because we see the lackluster of the uh, competitiveness of the country. And but but right now we have very immediate challenges from um, we can say the China flooding the Chinese goods that uh, flood into Thailand because uh, they can. Uh, produce uh, more and more, and they expand their capacity, and they can uh, flood uh, cheap goods, uh, cheap goods into Thailand, and that's uh, the big threat of the of the of the Thai economy. That we already have the very poor competitiveness. So this is one of the campaign that we will launch next month. That uh, we have to make sure three things. The first is to make sure the law enforcement works. Because I think this is the main reason that um, we have the flux of uh, cheap Chinese goods that is not uh, compatible to to the standards or um, regulation in Thailand. And uh, second, we have to make sure the level playing field, all the taxes that Thai corporates have to pay uh, those uh, who want to um, do the business in Thailand, they have to do the same. And the third, we might have to think about the strategic protection uh, that we have to put into some particular sectors that we have to figure it out uh, by consulting all the stakeholders. Of course, we don't want to become like the protectionism, um, a protectionist country, but uh, you know, if we just uh, uh, you know, believe in the free market and uh, you know, let the all the things uh, flux into our country, at, and the, at the end, our our own entrepreneurs will die, and uh, we ha we have uh, nothing left for it, for the economy. So that's an uh, immediate challenge that uh, we will continue from um, from our policy. Hi.
Hi, good evening both. Napat uh, Kungsawat from NHK. Uh, in pursuit of a landslide victory at the next election, how would you try to balance attracting maybe new, more moderate voters uh, without alienating the already existing base? Um, it is uh, about to light the repositioning uh, for the People's Party to gain more voters that uh, who, who didn't vote for us uh, from the Future Forward and from the Move Forward Party. I believe that the, the working hard and show that we can have something tangible that uh, the MPs on the opposition side is or uh, the mayor in the local uh, gov government that we can bring the policy to into the reality. This kind of works can uh, can bring more support and can uh, bring the confidence to the people that we can uh, bring our policy into reality. So we believe that uh, the local uh, government should be a great opportunity for us to prove that to the people. Uh, this is the one thing. And the second thing I believe that is to expand the, 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 the party members in the country. So as I mentioned earlier, within this year, we we have the campaign like the open house campaign in our provinces in Thailand. So uh, the, the, this, 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 uh, the like the our strategic work to to win the majority seats in the parliament in the next election. Thank you. Any more question, Gwen? Yep. Hello, Gwen Robinson from Nikkei Asia. Thank you for coming to the club tonight. Um, I had two questions. One was more about a policy matter concerning the casinos and the expectation that it's all going to go a bit wild when, uh, when, the, uh, when the stops come off on uh, the casino policy. And uh, People's Party, I presume, uh, takes the same position as Move Forward did, which is a bit curious. Con do you find it concerning uh, some of the worries about what casinos could bring for Thailand in terms of some of the more negative aspects. Um, and secondly, uh, the other question is more about the party and its future. Um, you know, you've got through this recent challenge, uh, but you've got a big one coming up next year, perhaps, um, for the court challenge. So I'm just wondering how you uh, are thinking about meeting that if the, the courts are going to knock out even more of your best and brightest people. Thank you. Okay, uh, I will answer the first question about the casino. Don't talk about casino, it's called entertainment complex. It's <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a lot better. <laughs> yes, of course, and um, casino will account for 10% of the area usage as uh, stated in the, in the latest draft that, that, um, that uh, they about to submit it to, to the parliament. And of course, we. We have been working on this since the last um, since the last term. We set up the ad hoc committee on this, and we studied, you know, thoroughly about this. And every um, and the second time in this in in this uh, session, we also have set up this ad hoc committee and and, and you know doing another report. That is which is not mm, different from the last one, but uh, right uh, the second one we all have also uh, submitted the, the draft of the, of the bill. And um, we found this um, differences that surprise us. Every time that we have done this study, we also add um, uh, how to handle all the negativities, the, the negative externalities that, we, that, that we're gonna have once we have this um, casino or entertainment complex the impact on the, uh, the communities, the crime rates that could uh, hike, and uh, you know, these sort of things, and also you know, to provide some of the, the revenue that we've got from this, um, this uh, business just to, to, to alleviate the, the impact 
that uh, it's going to have right after we have this entertainment complex. But uh, in the latest bill, um, the latest draft that uh, about to be submitted to, to the parliament that uh, right now is on public hearing, those um, measures that uh, we've got to prepare for those um, negative externalities that we're going to have has all gone. But still, we, we still have you know, to, to try to uh, have it back you know, once we consider in the, you know, in the, the in, during the committee process or the, the second reading to make sure that all, all of the negative impact that could, incur, it could occur from this um, um, business uh, should be uh, taken care, uh, well taken care of. The second thing is the choices of location. Uh, lots of people have said that uh, we have, you know, a lot of model of choices that uh, we want to, to, to make it very concentrated, you know, just like in Las Vegas or Atlantic City, or we have to do it, you know, very, um, you know, deconcentrate you know, to a lot of, lot, lots of uh, area. And uh, the, how we choose it, I think we have to add the aspect of you know, distribution of, you know, income and, and prosperity. So to choose one location is just to make sure that maybe it's the place that it's, you know, in, in needs or uh, have very low uh, income or uh, they are very in a dire need uh, of uh, new industry or new business to make sure that people have got some decent jobs, for example. But this is, um, you know, according to this draft, uh, this, all, of the, all of these decisions belongs to the policy committee. So it means that it's not guaranteed that they might have choose um, Bangkok, for example, which is already, you know, have it all. So um, we have to push uh, um, these issues too, that to make sure that uh, the choice of the location would guarantee the, the, the prosperity uh, distribution. So, um, so, to sum up, we agree on this issues that we should legalize the casino, but still um, we have to be very, very careful on, uh, on, on the process. And the second question, could you please uh, repeat it again? Oh, um, that you have many challenges coming up next year yeah. as well. The courts are not giving up. Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, are you cons what's your strategy, what's your thinking about if they're taking out more of your best of writers? If they get banned, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. You, you know, uh, for the, the cases that the judiciary uh, writing against that, uh, it is the, some kind of out of our control. <laughs> All the thing that we can do is to prepare the case as best as we can do. And we think the more important thing is to prove to the people, to not prove to the court itself that it's not come from the people. So the thing that we work hard, the thing that we run the local election campaign, the thing that we can reach to the people, and we can bring the policy to the people, we prove the people, and we turn into the next uh, election result that we can run the government. So as a me, as a per person or myself, including Kun Sri Kanya, who is in the 44 cases, I believe that we are all here from the Future Forward Party to the People's Party. We are not we, we don't want to be here as a, that we, we want to be an MP, but we just want to be an MP we, we, because we want to change the country. So I think that to answer your question, I w we will do my best to fight the cans against us. And the very more important thing that we have to do is to work hard to prove to the people. I, I believe that, 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 is it, uh, that, that is our solution. Peter Trainer, club member. Uh, I have a general question for, for both speakers, and it's can the People's Party or any party beat the system? <laughs> Historically, 
Thailand's been ruled by the monarchy and the military since the times of Sukhothai and Ayutthaya. It's always been that way. Ten years ago, you had a, a military coup, and the aims, uh, uh, the military coup deposed a democratically elected government, and the aims of the military coup have been carried forward through established institutions like the election committee, the constitutional court, the constitution itself, that were put in place so that the situation in Thailand today is the same as it was in May 2014 when you, when you had a coup, because the institutions are still there. So we had a meeting, there was a couple of meetings at the Foreign Correspondence Club just prior to the last election. And the discussion in the meetings was that somehow or other, however future forward was, or move forward was going to be, uh, how, however they were going to um, achieve results in the election, they were going to be disbanded. They were going to be put aside because that's what happens in Thailand. So the question to, to yourselves is, is there any way that any party, the People's Party in particular, can motivate 70 million people to change the system? You had, uh, Future Forward had 7 million votes. Move Forward had 14 million votes. Thai people that I know said, well, at the next election, either move forward or the replacement, are going to get 21 million votes. <laughs> but will it make any difference if the Constitutional Court and the other institutions can just disband the parties and block the politicians, they can block the previous Prime Minister, is there any way that any party can motivate the people to change that system? Thank you for a very good question, but I think I may answer uh, into separate answers. The first one is some kind of the ideal answer, but I believe that it is still true. You have to keep the people hope. And you know, for the second thing that to answer more practically, for the next election, I believe that we have to get uh, the 20 million votes at minimum to win the majority seats in the parliament. And to achieve that, we can do many things during, during these uh, next three years. For example, the article by article constitution amendment to limit the power of the constitutional court uh, to not uh, overrule the government that erected by the people. That is the very practical thing that we can do as an opposition party during these three years. And uh, the other things I, I mentioned earlier is about to uh, working hard, reach out to the people, and bring the policy to, into the reality. Because we have to fix like the old political system, the money politics. We have to prove the people that uh, the way we are going to do, offer the people only the policy that improves their quality of life, it can be real in Thailand. So that is uh, the thing that we can do, and we, we, will, we will do our best. Yes, I want to add a little bit more about this. I think every time that the system tries to beat us, they have to use up their own political capital. And uh, every time they have, you know, those funny rulings and verdicts, they have, you know, have to use their, their own political capital that hey, they have um, collected and they have gained for, you know, several years. And I think they, they kind of have ran out of their political capital right now. And um, I think we just um, need more time. And at the end, if we keep fighting this fight and people um, won't leave us, 
behind and you know backed us more and more. I think someday we'll win. Maybe in my generation or maybe the next one. But if we keep fighting, we'll win. I think. Thank you. Uh, Sean Crispin, Asia Times. Um, imitation, I guess, is the highest form of flattery. Some look over at Pua Thai now and see a very young leader um, in the chair leading the country. Um, the notion that perhaps they've attempted to co-opt some of your symbolism um, and imagery. Um, I wonder if you might speak to this notion that now that you've been dissolved once, twice, and now in your third iteration, some critics saying the C team as opposed to the old A team. Um, is there a risk that Pua Thai um, steals your agenda, steals um, your uh, imagery, steals this notion that they're the new generation party? Well, we must remember that when Toxin was first elected, they were think new, act new. What makes you so different from Pua Thai now? And Takun Natapong, if, say, tomorrow elections were held, why are you a better leader for Thailand than, uh, than Kun Ng? Yeah, uh, I answer the first part, and uh, it's a particular um, question for Kuna Tapong, uh, he will answer himself. I think um, we don't mind if Pula Thai Party steal our agenda. I mean, that's good for the country, right? We have done, we have, success, uh, we, we have successfully um, um, met them um, to, you know, follow our agenda. For example, marriage equality. You know, back uh, five years ago, I was the first one who said that uh, we were going to propose to build for the marriage equality. At that time, no other party said so. I'm the only one. But then, in this election, every single party in the country has, you know, proposed or endorsed this bill. So we don't mind if, if they steal our agenda. Of course, if um, if they want to, you know, reposition their, their their own party to become like the new generation, that's even better for the country, right? We we dire for uh, the newer generation of leader. We you know we're getting bored or fed up with the, with the, you know the, those old generation who rules the country for so long of a time. So. Um, what would make us different? Because we are the agenda setter. We are the first who bold enough to say something. It's may uh, even though it's controversial, even though it's you know we will lose some of our popularity. So, but uh, we have this bravery to propose that, and uh, we are not afraid. Um, if someone wants to copy it or are doing it, if they do better than us, do so. We don't mind. And uh, what would make us different? It's because our party is, you know, very open. They may, they might have very young generation, but look at their last name. It's gonna be familiar, right? Because they are daughters or uh, sons or um, cousins or nephews, nieces of someone. You, you might know, but for us, we are, you know, we are commoners, we are common people, like, you know, the rest of the people of the countries, we have these similarities that they don't. So I, don't, I think this will make a difference and we will differentiate ourselves and win the election again in three years. And thank you, Kun Sali Kanyan, for the question about uh, if the election day is happening tomorrow, uh, what is uh, for me to be the better option to the people comparing to the Kun Pat Tong Tan. I will answer your question like this. I have to ask you that, uh, what is the reason why that make me here or make Kun Pat Tong Tan in the prime minister position today? I believe that everyone will, tell, will answer this question it is because the corrupted or the distorted system. It is the best for the people in the normal or the full democratic country that people have many, many options, many, many candidates, compet uh, compet uh, competitive candidates to let the people choose. 
But today, you can see what, hap what happened in Thailand. I believe that it, it is not good to the people because our current system. So I think that it will be good for all Thai people if we can fix the corrupted system, the, the, the current system, before the next election. And for me, personally, as I told you earlier in the beginning of this forum, I will try my best. I believe that I myself can improve more within the next three years. But honestly, as a party leader, that I think I apply to tell truth to you, to all people. If the election day is happening tomorrow, I am now here and might not deserve, I'm not good enough to Thai people. But me in the future, if you look at me in the past five years, when I am a district, I was a district MP of Bang Khe. At that time, I just want to help the future forward party to gain the party list votes because the one ballot elect electoral system. I, I, I didn't dream that I can become an MP or, or the party leader right now. But you know, look at me as just such normal people before I, 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 I was MP and I travel along with Kun Sili Kanya with all my colleagues in my party. I'm here as a party leader. So I believe in myself, believe in my colleagues that I can improve more. So to answer your question, to summarize again, I think the, the most important thing we have to do is to fix the corrupted system in Thailand. Okay, I'm gonna give maybe one more or Two more. Okay. Uh, hello. Um, I'm Thomas. I'm a sociology teacher. Uh, I recall at the last election, my students were very excited about move forward. 2027 is quite a few years away from now. How do you plan to keep the enthusiasm among the youth voters, but also to greater engage when you have Huatai putting forward policies? which we know are economically not viable, but very popular among the urban and rural working class. What alternatives do you look to provide to engage those voters, but also to maintain the enthusiasm of the youth? I may answer the question first and may pass uh, to Kun Sili Kanya about the policy proposal that uh, she might have in her mind. I think the very important thing that we have to do to keep the into that enthusiasm in uh, for in our party is about to keep along our core values our core principles about to protect the human rights uh, or the the main key themes as you guys may have heard before for example the three d's the new demonopolization, demilitarization, and decentralization. I think these three D is the key themes of all of our policies that benefit to the most of the people in the country. So if we keep continue to tell the people that we will keep this principle along the way, I, th I believe that we will gain more and more support uh, for the People's Party. Yeah, about about that. We we I think we've been through this situation before. I'm the second term um, MPs, and we have seen the the day uh, that we moved to move forward party. Can you believe that the popularity, you know, of Kun Pita is just three percent? Mm. You know, it's just um, it's just uh, the matter of the moment because you know, it's uh, one year after the election, people are not in the mood for follow uh, those politics or the news anymore, and we all kind of fade out from uh, your YouTube feed or TikTok feed, but that's, I think, it's normal, and we have to, 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 to live with it. At the meantime, we can still work to expand our network of youths, of um, those 
um, new interest groups by you know proposing um, the policy that uh, interests them. We have you know a lot in the in the pockets right now for the policy that we have to um, that we have two years and eight months to to sell them to those stakeholders. You know to to try to convince them to, to buy our policy or to fix our policy to be even better. And I think this is my job that we have, have assigned from, from my leader that I have to you know, carry along our policies and, and the new one and, um, and, the, and the rest uh, to sell out to, to those people who, who you know, might not in the mood for uh, you know, listen to the politics news or watching the politics news, but they are eager to, to know what uh, um, on the table for them to change their, their lives, to change um, to better their, their, their business, for example. So um, this is the time to work in the background, maybe not um, um, you know, at front end that much for us at then I think once the election has come, the, those enthusiasm will come back. Just like when Kulpita has reached 46% of the popularity vote uh, um, just before the election. Final question, please. Oh, you want to ask this one? Okay, two more. Take your time. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'm Chalida Thajaransak. I am the chairperson of People Empowerment Foundation, the National Human Rights Organization, Thailand, based in Bangkok. I have two questions. The first one, how that People Party deal with the post-conservative uh, nationalist group right now is also pop up in the society and create a lot of crisis and uh, problem in our uh, uh, situation right now. The second question is about the uh, young poli uh, political prisoner with 112 that many of them still remain in the jail. What is your policy to, to do to deal with, this with the case? Thank you. So the second is political prisoner. The first the one first was is um, conservative, conservative, nationalistic. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yes, of course. I think uh, we have attacked a lot. Um, you, you have been attacked a lot by those um, conservative, nationalistic, you know, even racist. And uh, we have to admit some of them are our voters. So it means something that uh, once we become the mass party, uh, are we still being a reformist party, right? But then um, we have to, you know, to to very true to our uh, principles, to our uh, to to our integrity, that uh, it's our job to try to make them understand what uh, we are, what we are trying to do. Of course, we will, you know, it's you know, it's very, very difficult jobs to do. You know, try to make them understand and uh, you know get. Uh, on board with us again and uh, agree with what, what we are doing. And um, it's uh, a long way to prove on this. And uh, I think it's these challenges is going to come um, more and more often since we have, you know, very broader base of supporters and they have, you know, all different spectrums of the ideology right now since we gain like uh, the most um, votes from, from the people. And uh, we think we have to try to change their mind to agree with us, right? And uh, for the rest, that uh, those attackers who are not our supporters, so maybe we can, <laughs> we can set them aside <laughs> and, and, uh, and uh, um, don't worry much about those um, attacks. For the young political prisoner, it's still what we are um, trying to, to drive, uh, to, to get them out. We, um, we are in the ad hoc committee for the amnesty of the political prisoners. Even though it's really hard to, to change the other committee's mind to include uh, those prisoners that uh, uh, has been um, alleged of the article 112, 
but still we are trying our best to change their mind and um, um, even though the re you know the the job that the committee has done and the report will be um, debating uh, in the parliament in a couple of weeks but we will still um, hope that uh, once we have uh, the draft of the amnesty bill we will still have time to to work on um, the rest of the, the parliament to agree upon us. And we will work hard on that too. Phil, final question. Good evening, my name is Phil Robertson. I'm an FCCT board member and director of Asia Human Rights and Labor Advocates. Um, since I'm sitting here enjoying a craft beer and we're sitting here in actually a bar and restaurant, I wanted to ask you about the alcohol control bill and what your plans are about this. Um, I note that the Prime Minister used to be the chair of the soft power committee and it seems to me that along with Thai food, which is a soft power, you have the importance of Thai craft beer. Therefore, what are your plans for that going forward in the parliament and where do you prioritize that in your list of issues that you're going to take up? Yes. Um so uh, the draft, the, uh, the draft, uh, the amendment of this alcohol um, control bill has been um, during the, you know, they have uh, passed the first reading and now is in the ad hoc committee. And I've heard that that our our you know party's uh, committee has very hard time doing their jobs in that committee. <laughs> And but uh, it's still going on, so I hope uh, we uh, will have good news. If um, and um, for it, so the consumption is really really um, hard to 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 convince people to convince people that um, that uh, we you know if we try to to encourage people to consume more, that's uh, it's uh, it's really really. Uh, you know, difficult things to do in, in Thai society. But if we look at the production side, and uh, as we want to encourage more and more people to, to, to become like entrepreneurs by the liquor liberalization, so it's uh, another bill. Uh, it's called, it's excise tax bill, but uh, it uh, says a lot of things about the uh, limitation and regulations on the production of the alcohol. So we focus more on that uh, on that uh, liquor libera liberation bill. So as uh, we think that um, um, to work on the production side, it's there are a lot of more a lot more of the benefit uh, to to the you know newcomer to the market. Of course, the consumer will have more choices. You don't limit it to you know a couple of brands of beer in the market, for example. So, um, and um, it's easier f to convince Thai people that uh, we promote the production, not to promote the consumption. And uh, <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, so we still have this hope for the liquor liberation bill to pass. We have done uh, all the negotiation and lobbying uh, for the past, <laughs> parts of past week just to make it pass the first reading, um, you know, um, there are three drafts submitted to the parliament, um, one from Pua Thai, one from um, Rom Thai Sunshine, and the others from uh, the other from People's Party or the, move forward, uh, the former Move Forward Party. And even though we don't, um, uh, our, uh, our draft uh, uh, don't, uh, don't get uh, voted to pass, but um, we have like kind of the same uh, uh, contents in the other two bills, which means we don't mind if our own agenda that we have worked for it for uh, six years has been, you know, has been um, done and completed by other parties. Even though our bill has not passed, it doesn't mean that uh, our idea it's gone, right? It's still there, and we're still the winner, the champion of, of, of this issue. Thank you. Okay, well, on that note, um, I think we're, we have, you guys have been very generous with your time. Thank you very much. Any parting words? Uh, maybe, or Chris, any, any final thoughts before we wrap up the evening? Um, you know, I mean, we have a variety of questions from the foreign press, but maybe any parting thoughts at all? 
Okay. So something short, maybe? First of all, thank you for uh, you all today. And I truly believe that the wind of change, the way that we're doing in Thailand politics, that we want to bring the, the ultimate power back to the people. No one can stop that. And I would like to address to you that we are still having hope that we can make a real change. As Kun Silikanya said earlier, that if we keep fighting and fighting, we will win one day. I believe that also. But we, we, we are doing this not like a, a shy dream. We are proven to you from the Future Forward Party, with, with which we want uh, 80 seats. The Move Forward Party, we want 151 seats. And we think that we have a high chance in the next election if we can prove to the people that we are here to make a change for the good of the all people. So I believe that we can make a real change in the next election. So Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Um, so with that, I would like to end the evening. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the program and not a member yet, please become a member. Uh, and I would like to also say to both of you that uh, you guys are welcome to come back anytime when we, we would like to have you more uh, with us. Actually, could you back next week. back next week <laughs> for our event with BitCup on the 2nd of October, um, where Kunapisit Recha Shiwa will also be on stage. So looking forward to that. Thank you, guys. Good night and take care. Thank you. Thank you.